Hello everybody and happy Wednesday and welcome to your daily lighting critique. Thank you guys for the patience the last couple days. I've been doing written critiques in lieu of these videos just because life got a little complicated. But we are back. I'll be back the rest of the week um, uh, doing videos for you guys. So we've got a couple of uh, a couple of animations to look at. Then we're going to look at some stills. Uh, we've got Justin and Kat. First up, we're going to look at Justin. Uh, Justin, this is the cleanest that we've ever seen this. Can you talk through uh, what, we got, what we're looking at here? Yeah, I, got, I did some of the updates to the hair. So we finally up, finally up the samples for the render. So now we have like a nice clean render, mm -hmm. and then did the, all the compositing. Very cool. Well, the the depth of field helps out a lot. Um, there was one point. Let's see where it is. Like it gets a little wonky. I think it was back in here. Let's see. Actually, that looks okay. Maybe I was wrong. So it kind of goes back. It follows him. I guess it's right there. So it goes like he's like way out of focus and then he goes into a little bit like it goes a little bit tighter there at the end. So I think I think that this level of focus works. I would just watch out for like once he gets to about that level. Like just in here gets a little extra blurry. Um there were a couple things that stood out when I was watching this through. Um First off, all this looks good. One one of them was that her teeth are kind of pink here. Um, and there's a, this little bit under her eye, it's right there and there. So just watch out for that stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't know what's causing the under eye for the pink uh, teeth. It, hopefully, there's just a mat, and we can desaturate that um, in the comp and just just that area. Because I think I think it's just getting a lot of bounce probably from her clothing. Um, and I, I love the 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 material that you have on here now. It's good and simple and clean and similar to what you had before. But there's that like little bit of a breakup in the sheen. Uh, there's some sort of math in the specularity or the roughness or something that's really working well. Um, and then the other thing that I noticed was the, the knife of the robot reflects like this, this very warm reflection, um, when you play that speed is a little, like it kind of, it kind of flashes and it can be, I don't, I don't know why, but it doesn't, it doesn't like feel like it's actually reflecting the room. It actually feels like it's reflecting her, but she's on the opposite side of it just because of the colors the same. So I would just watch out for that. It's totally fine. It's just that the color matches her color so well that it, 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 it kind of broke my brain for a split second there. Um, and then- Yeah, it's probably bounce cards. Yeah, just, just change that bounce card color then to something that, that it could be like the blue from the background or the white from the background, just something that kind of matches that. The robot gets a little bit, a little bit dark in here, um, and I I love that he's going through a, a variation in the lighting, but looking at the lighting in the environment, the amount of darkness that the character gets feels a little bit too strong. So he's like good here, and then he falls back, and it's like right, it's kind of right in here, um, and looking at the variation between the lightness on the ground, it's not quite as much. Uh, does anybody else have any thoughts? I think this looks really good overall. Her skin looks great. I love the subtle color on her hair. I love the blue in the background. Everything else is looking really good. Hey, um, question. Shoot. And it's just maybe a depth of field thing that I'm not understanding. Also, I'm watching this on my phone. But when the robot starts flying back after she kicks him, it almost looks like he looks smaller. Like it's like a tilt shift. It's like he gets miniaturized kind of for yeah. a second. It's it's the heavy, <laughs> yeah, it's the heavy, like anytime that you add a lot of depth of field, it makes, uh, lots of depth of field only happens on small objects. It's like if you're kind of mm. zoomed in on something, um, you'll never see a lot of depth of field in a landscape photograph. It's just the, it's right. just like the, the mechanics of how that works. Um, is that like once you start expanding the focal range, everything else kind of tightens up a little bit. It's only right. it's only okay. when things are in compressed spaces that they and that's why when things are 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 are, are very blurry they feel very small. Um, it's like a tilt shift effect, like you said. And I think it's just because of that that middle section where he gets extra blurry in there. Yeah, yeah it's it, just at, like, at a, like small. <laughs> yeah. At about four seconds, mm -hmm. um, it looks like it looks like there's a robot b behind her uh, in the. Um, no, I heard, do you see it? It, it like yeah. flashes for a split second. Yeah. Yeah, she's landing on the robot. It's the robot from before. Yeah, I think that's part I, of 
<laughs> it doesn't. No, it shouldn't be there. It, it just you know, like a lot of people. A lot of other people have have gotten rid of it. I think maybe get rid of it too. Oh, you know what? It, it, it also or or add motion blur to it or add motion blur to the shot. Maybe the other one because when you, when she falls on it, it's just like it's just like stroby when it, the way it pops up. Got it. So I I would I would consider turning it off too, just because it it does like it I. The, it doesn't read it that they're like the number of robots kind of gets confusing in this shot. Um, and like, yeah, it kind of just feels like she's dropping down on one. Cause you just don't see it. Like you, and you, that's the only time that you really see it, but she's on top of that one there. Anyway. All right. Let's look at uh cat's version of the same shot. All right. So Kat. I only got to the end of the first half. Okay. <laughs> So talk us through. So you you had you had a write up. Talk us through what's uh, what's changing about this. So um, I basically went into the comp and I wanted to. I told you before in the prior one that I wanted to make make it look more red. Mm -hmm. So I went in and started messing a, bit, a little bit with color correction stuff and working on different exposures and the levels. Mm -hmm. So what I like about this is like the red reads on her more than yeah. before. So you actually get the feeling like because. A lot of people were telling me on my earlier versions that it didn't look like she was part of the space yet. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get have her get more of the red. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of what I was working on. And then um, I made all the lights look the same. So I, I kind of got rid of a little bit of the variation. There's a little bit still there. Mm -hmm. But looking at like more references of lights like this, they're just kind of very, you know, monochromatic in a way. Mm -hmm. So I fixed all that. Um, I'm kind of really happy with this version. <laughs> like, yeah, th this is, I mean, I think it, I think it looks really like I'm looking at this going like I could put this on a demo reel because I'm not seeing too much that I want to change or fix. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the light on her, um, mm -hmm. she definitely feels integrated into the space, especially with that explosion kick and the amount of light that glows mm -hmm. up on her. Um, the two areas that I would, I would focus in on number one is that we still, mm -hmm. we still, um, there's still some parts where she flashes uh, a, a little bit flat in that, like in here. Uh, it's just that, like okay. some some of the hair stuff, just like still, it just isn't isn't um, shadowing her face quite as much. And there's another part I think it might be back over here too. And again, like oh, that's the other thing yeah. on this pose, the superhero one, the red that's on her eye, like yeah. her eyebrow kind of area, that is not um, bleed through. Because at one point I went and turned cast shadows on on all the lights, and I mm -hmm. think it's bouncing up from the floor. Okay. I would. So I don't. I, know how I, can fix that, so. I would. I would. Um, uh, if it's if it's in the AOV, I would find a way to get rid of it because it does feel like it's it's um, it does feel like it's just like a like I mean it's inside of her lip and I guess it I guess the position of it makes sense that it's bouncing up but it just it feels so sharp that it right. feels like it's coming from a light source. So I'm I, thinking maybe I, I see could if you can put like it. a little bit of a. Um, light blocker on the ground right mm -hmm. by her head right, like underneath her face maybe try mm -hmm. that see if mm -hmm. that would do it yeah but it, but also it's like it's just the like going up here like you would expect just like a little bit more shadow from her hair under her forehead um okay and then the other thing that i was thinking about for the environment um like the the colors and everything look great it's only because okay. we see so much of this um this uh uh i don't know what to call this the, the area back behind her and the red lights okay. are great and because they're a small, like they're getting very distinct specular highlights across here. And all of this floor feels like okay. one consistent shape. I think it would be cool for this, this middle section. I okay. would, you know, slightly change the color, slightly change the roughness, change the specularity, something to make it look, make it look a little different than, than what's what the, like make this area and this area feel different. And, and in some way, like make yeah. them uh, like it just because because it's it's too it's just too much of the same over a broad period a broad space, mm -hmm. and that and that makes it feel like CG. Like right here, it just looks a little bit more CG back there, and less like there's variation. Okay, okay. Um, but yeah, those. Are the and things. then the one other thing is up here on the flip when she's going up, she gets a little overexposed, like on her stomach. But I don't know if that just kind of works because she's getting so close to the light, or if I need to fix that or. When she's know. when like up here, when, like this, like yeah, like a couple frames towards the beginning. So back up a little bit, like right when she first jumps, like you can kind of see. Oh, but 
I mean, she's getting really close to the light, so I don't know if that would just make sense physically wise, you know or if I, I, I don't, I don't mind it in motion at all because it, okay. it it feels uh, it it feels it feels natural in motion. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'm I'm cool with that. Okay. Anybody else have any thoughts on this before we move to the stills? I'm just really happy with it. Yeah. I'm like yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. All right. Um, okay, so now we'll go through some stills. We'll go through alphabetically. Uh, Amy, you're here, right? Can, are you able to say hi? Sorry, I put you on the spot. I do that. If yours, if yours is coming up, I'm going to ask you to say hi. <laughs> uh, so, so overall, my first thought of this one, when this first popped up, was that it's too cool. Like I want it to feel a little bit warmer. Um, and let me let me just make an adjustment here. It's a little too, yeah, it's like a little too green and cool overall on his face. And so if we magenta, red, yellow, and just looking at his skin color, um, something like this would feel a little bit better. Soften this edge to this. Um, so that that was my that was my my number my biggest note was that his skin felt uh, yeah just like a little bit a little bit lacking that blood flow through the veins. Uh, I still say that I love the specular highlight on the top of the hair that you have for him. Um, just something a little bit more like this. And it's fine that there's a cool light overall. And like I said, I didn't you know you notice I didn't adjust his shirt or his, his, his jacket or anything. It's just that it, it's washing him out a little bit too strongly. Um, additionally, let me take this off so you can see. Additionally, like his eyes are, and this is a, I don't want to use the word problem. This is an issue with the character's model that like by default is that his eyes have a lot of variation in their sclera color and that like this area is very dark. This area in here is very light and it makes him feel not like eyes, but more like marbles. And so like the way that the the sclera of the eye is kind of a mushier material. It just hardens that a lot. So what I would do is I would um, try and lift these values of, of these darker areas to kind of make it more of a consistent white. The reflections in here are looking good. I would soften that a little bit. And then I would also uh, add a little bit of Amb like if, if you can run an ambient occlusion pass on this and get a little bit of ambient occlusion right around the edge of the eye, I would put that in there as well. Cause like that little bit of shadow really helps the eye set back into place a little bit. Um, and then in terms of the uh, eye dings, and actually now that I look at that, it brings up something else. Um, so I'm looking at the eye dings. There's two reflection cards that are reflecting on the screen right of this eye and the screen left of that eye. And that draws attention to that we don't really have a, a strong uh, key side or fill side. And that's actually leading him to looking a little bit flat too. So I would say for you to pick one side or the other as, as your kind of key dominant side. And, and I usually am not like this, like you have to do that this way with something like this. But this is, this is a very straightforward, like straight on kind of portrait look at him. And we want to be able to create some shaping in that. So I would say either pick, um, you know, this side or, or, geez, what a terrible arrow that was, this side or this side, and have the light come in from that angle and then kind of create the shadow going across like that, and then then more variation coming across this way, um, and that will allow us to position the eye dings, you know, if, if we're I'm assuming that we're coming across from the right to left, um, that would allow us to position them in 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 kind of the the same side because when you kind of put them as two opposite sides. It's, um, less appealing on the character. And the last thing to watch out for is the the shade around his lips can sometimes get funny, so you may need to desaturate that and kind of tone down um, not only the saturation, but the value on the lips as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, you've got it coming together pretty well. This is, it's just, uh, just making some tweaks there. Uh, Chris, we've got you up next. Um, so we have some a lovely... Uh, candlelit scenes from a variety of films here and it's kind of nice because it's like it's all about 
Candlelight's great to mimic because what it does, it's all about like centralizing the light into like this area in here. Um, and that helps really kind of create a cozy, intimate feeling because all the light is like within this, this realm in here. Um, I think I think you've got that look down pretty well because it's back behind him, so it's kind of creating this rim here. Um, I think the candle itself can get a little more variety in the in the value. Like I think it can get a little brighter here in, uh, internally, and then kind of fall off as we go. Um, I actually think the characters. I think I think you can you might even be able to push that a little bit stronger. Like looking at how much Jeremy Renner's uh, getting lit up by this candlelight. Um, I think that you can probably push more in that in that area. Um, and you might want to, hmm, how do I do this? So I'm looking at the background now and there's, I want to find a way to tone that back. I want to do two things. One, I want to tone down the lights so that it's not like we're not getting as many bright values back there. And number two is, uh, it's odd that these lights are kind of uh, emitting purple color. And uh, so I think, are those reflections or, or, or am I misreading that? Um, the, the reflections are the smaller. So, yeah, the reflections are, are the smaller ones below the lights. Okay. But I, but I think it, it gets misread because the, the, uh, the blue reflection is actually the bulb, mm -hmm. but it's, uh, for some reason, it's, it's. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know. I just I just messed it up. <laughs> no, it's fine. No, 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 it's fine. It's, it's, I'm just curious. So so this is what I think that you should do. I think you should take these lights and push them up out of camera so that we don't see the bulbs themselves. And then we can have the influence of light kind of falling back there to create a little bit of shaping back there. But don't okay. allow them to rival the brightness of the foreground. Um, okay. that's, that's, so I would make make this area in the center here a little bit brighter. And then... Uh, and then that, not quite that bright, but, um, and that will allow us a little more range in the background too, to kind of tone that, tone that down back there. And so the background, we will get light like that hits from, you know, cause like if we want to read that this is a restaurant, there would be lights over top of these individual tables. So you kind of imagine a, a cone of light here and a cone of light here that, um, are illuminating those, but not like not to that level, and I think that would be good. But the depth of field feels feels nice. Um, we might eventually want to push a little bit more fill onto these sides of their faces, just to kind of um, help soften them a little bit, because the, the 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 key to fill is a little bit little bit harsh. But this is like his back is looking really nice. Yeah, the structure of this is looking really good. Okay, thank you. I um, I you you cut out for a while for me there, but I'll, I'll just watch it in, in the. Oh, okay. Hopefully uh, the recording picked that up. Post. Sorry about that. Yeah. No, no, no. My fault. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. All right, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, Keldon, we have. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Good, good. Welcome, welcome. I think this is the first okay. time that you've been in the critique. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thanks, thanks for coming by. Um. So yeah, so I, I love the structure of this, right? I love this kind of slashing diagonal light that's going across her, it's adding shaping, it's adding um, interest to, to a lot of this. I think her, her eye things are really good, her hair looks really good, um, and the fact that you're kind of just picking up on these, you're, you're, you're maintaining the rich dark color, but like just kind of picking up the specularity on the, on the, on the rims. Um, the biggest thing that I think that we could work on is adding specularity to the skin. Okay. Right now it feels very, very matte, and I want to get some some specular highlights in there as well. Um, I found the skin shader to be pretty difficult to work with. I was yeah. wrestling it for a couple hours, especially yeah. the subsurface uh, quality of it. But yeah, we we might you might you might have to either rebuild it or make adjustments based on the individual lighting circumstance that you have here. Um, yeah. Okay. And then and then the other thing that I would uh, I would watch out for is that. Um, so this is a this is a backplate from like a JPEG or something. Yeah. Background. Okay. So one one of the things when you darken and this is like when you darken JPEGs like since the bright values are just kind of like clamped at one when you pull yeah. them down they just kind of kind of gray out a little bit. So I so like this is kind of like the, this bright moonlight just kind of being flat gray is kind of giving that away. Um, 
I would consider just scaling it up a little bit just so that's like off camera a little bit more or or when you're pulling down the value just just keep allowing that to stay bright um just so it can kind of it kind of feels a little bit better um, gotcha. so so either sort of roto and then color correct that yeah. little dot there yeah, yeah, or yeah. just push it out okay yeah. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. and then and then like you can also push a, probably a little bit more specularity in the in her, her in her shirt as well because I know that's got some sparkle in it too. Yeah, that's um, that's entirely specular. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we can push that a little stronger. But yeah, it's good. Like, but like I said, the structure is, um, is really really nice. I would also maybe consider making the eye dings a little bit cooler as well to reflect the light. That's okay. As well. But yeah, good stuff, man. Okay, thanks. Yeah. All right, and last up, uh, we have Mercy. Mercy, are you here? I thought I saw you in here. No, we do not have Mercy, but we are going to look at her work. <laughs> um, so the biggest thing with this, with the reference, is just the amount of brightness that we're getting on the character's skin. I think we can. I think we can hit that a little bit stronger here. I think she can get uh, brighter as the whole, as a whole. Um, and just a little bit there. And then the other thing is that. We, we talk about this in the character lighting course, and I don't know if, you, if you've gotten to that point yet, but we have the idea of a key um, and then a key fill or a key wrap in that there is kind of two lights that make up our key light there. And, 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 and this is a good example of, of how this would work. There's this like tight uh, rim that's kind of around there. And then there's a, a little bit of a broader key light that's, that's coming from um, the large, the, the large uh, carousel as well. So what I would do is I would make um, one spotlight kind of coming back behind her and make that kind of almost like rimming her up and making that the warm color and then wrapping a second key light around a little bit so it's uh, so it's, it's hitting up her face and kind of giving that shaping. Now, the position of the light currently is a little bit too frontal on her and that like this cheek and this cheek are a little bit too similar in value. And so I would push that over a little bit to kind of get that to kind of uh, scrape off and fall off a little bit more quickly as we go across there. Um, yeah, I think that's a good. I think that's a good place to start, and then we can kind of this. We've got this rim. We've got that in her face. It's all, like and and that rim light is pretty light, tight, but the secondary key light is very very broad because now this. This carousel lighting is working as like one, uh, it's kind of mashed together and become like one big uh, soft light kind of a thing. Um, that the field is looking good there. And same deal like kind of what I was saying with, with Keldens is that we're kind of, um, when we darken a JPEG, it just makes the lights look kind of gray. So I, I would go ahead and, and leave that a little bit brighter for now. Um, and I think the depth of field will be enough, similar to what we're seeing here, where these super brights aren't aren't drawing us away from the character too much. Um, you could also shift this over a little bit this way. That will allow her to kind of be over top of this dark area. I don't know if we have more um, screen real estate that we can play with back there, but uh, positioning her over the darkness would would help help with the composition a little bit as well. Uh, all right. Does anybody else have any thoughts on this before we call it a day, or any other, anything else before we finish up? Mike, I had a, a quick question. When yeah. uh, do you make it? A, do you make it a rule in general to always add ambient occlusion to the to the eyes? I generally do. Um, okay. Yeah, just because it's it's, gonna, it's kind of the same thing here, right? Um, mm -hmm. Where there's you can see it. Let's zoom in. Um, you can see it where there's a because of the way the light the light works and there's kind of like this rim on the eye there that's that's picking up a little bit of extra light um that kind of just makes the edge a little bit glowy and then if if all we did was i'm just going to do a super mocked up version of this but like if we took this and we just kind of blurred that a little bit So, so just by like dropping that in a little bit, you can see that by adding that darkening, it does it does really help the eye kind of fall back into place there. 
um, then you can see how that 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 it, it just it just helps a little bit. And like I said, it just it just adds this like level of realism where like the eyeball is actually inside the eyelid. Yeah. So I'll start doing that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, thanks so much, everybody. I will talk to you all very soon. And uh, yeah, like I said, same time tomorrow. I think. Yeah. Uh, just check, I just checked my calendar real quick. Yes, we are all good for 11 a.m. tomorrow, and I will see you all then. In the meantime, all right, happy lighting, everybody. Thanks, Mike. Thank you.